Hi guys, welcome to Dinner Guide. I'm your chef and host, Shina Amario. Today we're going to be making beef stroganoff with some turmeric rice as well as some kachumbari. Beef stroganoff, if, if you've not had the term before, it's basically a Russian dish. It originates from uh, Russia and then there on people have made their own variations into it. The original dish actually uses um, sour cream, but then I'm not going to use sour cream, I'm going to use what we have easily available in Kenya, which is cooking cream or fresh cream. So to start off with the ingredients, we have some beef, some mushrooms, some parsley, some margarine, you could use butter as well, some flour, some salt, some black pepper, some ginger garlic, some turmeric, some rice, some rice as well as some cream, some parsley, oil, tomatoes, lemons, onions, ginger, and some garlic. So those are the main key ingredients that we're using for today's um, meal, which I've mentioned again is beef stroganoff, which the word stroganoff is a derivative from Russia. So if you're not familiar with it, that's where the dish ideally originates from. And I've mentioned I'm not going to be using sour cream. Like I've said, I'm going to be using cream which is easily locally available for us here in Kenya. But wherever you are, just try and adjust the recipe and make it work for you with whatever it is that you have available. So before we start with our cooking, we're going to go on a tiny little break. And when you come back, we're going to get to cooking. So see you in a little bit. guys welcome back to dinner guide i'm your host and chef shina amario again thank you so much for tuning in to watch dinner guide with me your host and chef um if you missed out earlier i mentioned we're making some beef stroganoff with some turmeric rice and some kachumbari kachumbari is just another word for tomato salsa in kiswahili which is basically a combination of some tomatoes some onions as well as some um, denier usually but today i'm going to make a change and use some parsley but traditionally in kenya we do actually use denier and then usually you season that with now some salt and some black pepper if you wanted that's again my preference technically in kenya we use just salt and of course some lemon so to start off with we're going to start with some rice and for the rice i'm going to go ahead and add my already grated ginger and garlic that's all that is and i'm going to put some oil in my pan I'm just going to pour out the water that was in there and then add some oil. And so I like turmeric rice because it gives it this beautiful, nice hue of color. But you could as well easily make some tomato rice at home. But this is just a nice, different way of making rice. If you're used to making your rice the normal way. So let's just adjust this, right? Okay. So once you have that going on, we're going to add our, our garlic, like I've mentioned. We have our ginger and garlic, which I've just grated. Now in this step, if you wanted to add some onions, you could definitely add onions into your mixture. I'm going to opt not to add any. So I'm just going to saute this. And once this is fragrant, then I'm going to add some turmeric and then my rice. And then turmeric, a little goes a long way, so always make sure you add very little turmeric, because once you add too much, then it's very pungent. So just a little bit, then we're going to stir it. Put that aside. So we're going to stir this, and already you can see the nice beautiful color you get. You can see that, the nice beautiful color you get. It's nice and nice and golden brown. Sort of like a yellow goldish color, and that's exactly what you're looking for. So I'm going to set this aside because I don't want my garlic mixture to burn. I just want it to be fragrant. 
And then once it's come together, as you can see, it's now time to add my rice. My rice had already been washed and pre-soaked. During the break, I did that. So if you're at home, you can definitely do this at home. Just make sure you wash your rice and pre-soak it for about 10 minutes or so. But you could easily just do it directly. So now I'm adding my rice to my turmeric and ginger garlic oil. Let me just stir this. Mm, already you can feel the aroma. And that's from the ginger and garlic. So I'm going to strain the water from here so I can capture the remaining rice. Okay. So nothing goes to waste. Then add the remaining rice. Then we're going to stir this. And then we add some a beef cube. This is uh, actually optional. If you didn't want to add the beef cube, you could definitely just add a chicken cube or some chicken stock, beef stock, or just add salt. So you don't have to add, like I've mentioned, the beef cube. You can totally add just salt or your own preference. So then we're going to give this a stir. So this is exactly what it looks like if you have a look this is what you're looking for okay i'm going to place this aside as i grab myself some water because again like i mentioned i don't want my rice to burn so we're just going to get some water and a good rule of thumb for you guys at home when you're making rice try to use the one to two ratio meaning if you use one cup of rice then you'd use two cups of water so I'm going to start off by adding the one cup. So back to the heat I go. And as you can see, I've already stirred my rice. And since it's already sticking to the bottom, I don't want it to continue sticking. So now I'm adding my water. And then the second cup as well. Okay, then once that's done, you could add a bit of salt, but then remember, if you've used a beef cube like I have, then the beef cube is going to have salt. So you have to be very careful with the amount of salt you put. So personally, I like to just put like a tint of salt, just not too much. But again, if you do not have salt at home, I mean, if you do not have a beef cube at home and you used salt and water, then obviously you'll put a bit more salt than I'm going to do. I'm just going to add my teaspoon here, and then add my salt. So that's like about half a teaspoon of salt. And then once this comes to a boiling point, we're going to simmer and cover our water. And at this stage, personally, I like to taste my mixture, my water mixture, to see how it's doing. Because that's the only way I'm going to get to know whether I've seasoned it right. So if you're at home, you've got to have, um... <laughs> well, that usually happens, it's a kitchen disasters. I'm just going to clean this up. So anyway, where was I? Yes, like I was saying, if you're at home and you're making food, always try to get into the habit of tasting everything as you go, because that will tell you when something is under seasoned or over seasoned. Mm. So to me, right where it is, it's fine. And then remember, as the water sets, the, the, the whatever you've added in it, which is now my beef cube and the salt, it's actually going to be stronger. So try not to add much salt or seasoning at the beginning of your cooking. Okay, so I'm just going to wash this. And then now cover my rice. Okay, so we're going to cover our rice and let that cook gently. I'm going to transfer it to the other heat so it can cook on a lower heat, but then let it come to boiling point first. Now in the meantime, I'm going to clear my section and then we're going to get started with our beef. So the beef cut here I'm using is just, yes, so the beef cut here that I'm using is just sirloin steak. So you could use whatever cut you want, but you want a cut that's not so tough 
so that that way when you saute it and you fry it, it's going to one cook very quickly and it's going to have some flavor to it. Otherwise, if you're using a very hard cut like a top loin or a top sirloin, then that's going to take you a longer time to cook and it's best for stewing. But if you're using a sirloin cut like I've mentioned or a ribeye cut or like something more prime like a fillet, then that's going to cook very, very fast. So just take that into accountability when you're doing your, your shopping for your meats. So for my meat, I'm just going to cut this into strips. And you could definitely cut this into cubes if you wanted. So just some strips, not very long again. And this is just a rough cut as you can see. And then once I'm done with this, I'm definitely going to check on my rice because I can see it's boiling. And if you notice, my meat does not have a lot of fat other than this, which I'm going to leave to try and infuse more flavor into it. But again, if you don't want any fat in your meat, by all means, you can take it out. So once we're done with our meat, we're going to set it aside. And you see, that was very easy to cut. Okay, then now it's time to set our rice aside at a lower temperature so that it can actually simmer. Okay, so we're going to lower the heat, transfer. We're going to get my pan here. Then we're going to open this up. And again, don't worry so much about the mess if you create a mess in the kitchen. It's all part of the cooking. Okay. So as the water is drying off my pan, for my meat here, I'm going to season it with some salt and some black pepper. Again, if you've been, if you've just tuned in for the first time, I'm a huge fan of black pepper. I'm always using black pepper for almost everything I cook, but it's actually optional. You can choose to use it or not. I like the taste that black pepper gives to food because it's like a subtle chili and it's not so strong. But if you're someone who likes more chili or like much of a punch to your food, then by all means use like fresh chili if you want to or some dry chili as well. So for my meat, I've just seasoned it with some salt and black pepper. And then I'm going to add some flour in here. I know the flour will do is just give it a nice crust when I'm frying it. So I'm just going to pour a little flour. And then once the oil has dried in my pan, as you can see, again, like I always say, try and keep an eye on everything that's happening around you. So then we add our oil. And you want to be generous with the oil at this stage. Like very generous. <laughs> Because then if you're not generous, then your meat is not going to crisp up and brown as well as you want it to. So like I've mentioned, I've just added some salt, some black pepper into my meat. And the reason for the flour is because I want my meat to have this nice, beautiful, golden texture to it. And the flour is going to help bring that out. Okay, once your oil is hot, swirl it around the pan. And again, the swirling is just to ensure that the oil is evenly coated in the pan. And then now we add our meat. And that's the sound you're looking for. Always look for the sizzle. And whenever you add meat to your pan, try and make it a habit not to crowd your pan. You want to make sure that each piece of meat you put in the pan is actually sitting on the pan. That way each piece is going to be nice and golden brown. But if you end up crowding your pan, what happens is you don't end up frying the meat. You actually end up steaming it. So try and always make sure you have enough room with whatever it is you're making and your meat portion. So I'm going to wash my hands again. Again, like I always say, if you're in the kitchen, it's very essential to make sure you clean your hands as you go, which I like to get into the habit of. And then just wipe them off. I'm checking on my rice here. I'm going to simmer it further. I'm just simmering my rice a little bit further so it can continue cooking gently. And my meat, as you can see, I've just added some salt, some black pepper, and the flour. And once the bottom crusts, this is at a medium heat, not very high, not very low. Because again, if it's too high, you're going to end up burning your meat before it's actually cooked. Though technically at this stage, I'm not looking to fully cook the meat, I'm just looking to brown it. Okay, I'm going to clear up my section just a little bit, as now I cut my onions. 
And like I always say, if you cut something raw, always try to clean up as you go. So I'm just going to turn my board to the other side, the clean side, cut, wash my knife. Because it's very important to don't cross-contaminate your food. So at this stage, it's time to turn. Don't worry about the fire, that happens. So that's because of the oil. So don't be afraid. Then we're going to have a look at the pieces that have not turned and just flip them through. And you see this nice golden brown color is exactly what you're looking for. If you guys could smell this, it smells absolutely heavenly in here. When the meat starts to caramelize and the fat starts to melt, mm, 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 mm. it smells so good. Okay, so in the meantime, as that is frying, I'm just going to take an onion and then slice it. So I'm using some sliced onions for my beef stroganoff. Again, if you're just tuning in, I mentioned beef stroganoff, it's nothing to be scared of. It's just a fancy word that is mainly derivant from Russia. The dish is from Russia. And what they use is meat cooked in sour cream. In our case, we're using fresh cream or cooking cream, whatever is readily available for you. Okay, so while that is going on, we're going to get our garlic. So I've just chopped some onion. And my garlic, that's a tip. What you've seen me do, that's a tip. It ensures that the skin comes off very easily. And then we're going to roughly just chop this, the garlic. Now, I love garlic. There's just something about it. it brings this nice, beautiful aroma. So our meat at this stage has actually browned. Again, like I said, it's bound to happen because that's the oil. So don't be scared of a little flambe if you see one happening. So once your meat is this nice, beautiful brown color, oh, it smells so good. <laughs> It's time to take it off the heat. And then once you take it off the heat, we're going to add our onions into the mixture, into the remaining oil that is. So set this aside, get yourself a clean plate, and then get yourself a wooden spoon and just set aside the meat. Okay, so we're just going to set aside the cooked meat. And then leave the remaining oil. If your oil was too much, then you would definitely take it out. But I'm going to use the remaining oil now to saute my onions. So just add that in. Okay. And then we want to toss this. Again, I really love tossing. If you're not used to tossing, you can always just use your wooden spoon. Just stir it. So whatever I'm making is again one of the simple dishes that I love to cook. If you're at home, it's something that you can easily try at home. I like bringing you guys meals that you're able to do at home that are very quick and are very easy. Our kitchen is getting quite smoky if you can see and that's from actually the beef. So don't get alarmed. <laughs> If you're at home and you've got like a, a smoke detector, then you might want to put that off because it's going to get really smoky in the kitchen. Okay, so once your mixture is nice and brown, it starts to caramelize your onions. Then it's time to add your garlic. We're going to add our chopped garlic in here. As well as our mushrooms. For the garlic, again, I don't want my garlic to brown, so that is why I'm adding my mushrooms immediately. So once you stir that in, then now you have your sliced mushrooms. And again, these are just the normal button mushrooms that I've sliced. So these are washed and sliced. So add your mushrooms, set that aside, and then stir it some more. And you want to bring this together so once our mixture starts to sweat a little bit, basically sweating is whereby they start to release their own natural juices, then we're going to put back our 
meat. And like I mentioned, you could use whatever cut you have at home, but then I would prefer you use a cut that is soft, so like a fillet or a ribeye or a sirloin, something that is soft that's going to make your cooking really fast. So I'm going to add some margarine in here. You could use butter if you have some. And the margarine, again, is just going to give it this rich flavor. So I'm stirring this aside. Oh, the smells in this kitchen are just absolutely decadent. It smells so good. And this by itself, you could actually have your mushroom mixture just like this as it is. So if you're at home and you didn't know how to make mushrooms, this is actually a tip for you. You could make your mushrooms just like this, season it with some salt and pepper, and you're done. You have a dish by its entire eternity. And you see what the butter did there? Suddenly my mushrooms are looking all nice and luscious. Yes, they are. <laughs> and they've got this nice beautiful sheen to them. Okay. So now at this stage, once your mushrooms start to shrink, like you can see, it's now time to put back your meat mixture. So just put back your meat. And then stir this. And then on this stage, we are actually going to add our cream. So I'm not adding any seasoning just yet. I want to add my cream, then I'll taste for seasoning, because remember, my meat has seasoning in it. So add your cream. And it's going to bubble. Then set it aside and then do some more stirring and be very gentle. Oh, I love creamy, creamy beef as well as creamy chicken. And the kitchen is getting really hot. Yes, it's getting very hot. <laughs> That's what happens when in the kitchen, you've got to take the heat. Okay, so at this stage. I like to taste my mixture and then see what I need to add. So just put it aside. Yeah, so definitely I need to add some seasoning. Like I mentioned, it's always good to make sure you have a little bit of a taste before you add the seasoning. Because you can always add seasoning, but you can't take it out. So just remember that fact. And a bit of black pepper. Again, I'm going to be very liberal with my black pepper because personally I love black pepper. If you don't, you don't have to. Okay, then we're going to mix this again and then we're going to put it back into the heat and now at this stage I can actually add the remaining cream because my mixture has already thickened and then we're going to stir this so you could do this again with some sour cream if you have some with some fresh cream I'm using cooking cream so just make it your own if you're at home okay then from here, we're going to add some parsley. And then I'm going to cover this before we go on a short break. Because this dish by itself, it's already done. It will only need about five minutes and it's cooked. It's just for the flavors to infuse and come together. So then get your lid and cover it and then let this just steam by itself slowly. So when you guys come back, we're going to go ahead and make our kachumbari. Like I've mentioned, kachumbari is just a tomato salsa. And we are making some beef stroganoff as well as some turmeric rice. So when you come back, we'll go to the kachumbari. So I'll see you guys in a little while. guys welcome back to dinner guide i'm your host and chef shina we're just going for a small tiny commercial break but if you missed out we're actually making some beef stroganoff 
as well as some turmeric chicken and some kachumbari which I'm about to start. The beef stroganoff, if you missed out, is basically just some meat which is cooked in some cream and some parsley, some salt, some black pepper and some mushrooms. Usually the Russians use sour cream but we are going to just use cream like I mentioned earlier if you missed out. And then we're making some turmeric rice which is already set and cooked. And the rice just had some ginger and some garlic, some fresh ginger, fresh garlic, some turmeric and oil. And it's already ready. I used a beef cube in there as well. But I mentioned if you didn't want to use a beef cube, you could use a chicken cube or whatever you have in handy. So for my kachumbari, I'm going to go ahead and cut my tomatoes. And kachumbari is just a Kenyan tomato salsa, if you're not familiar with it. And all it is just tomatoes and onions in, and onions in a nutshell. So I'm going to deseed my tomatoes because I like to do that. Now this is actually preferential. You don't have to do it. I just feel like when I do it, my salad is a lot neater and stays out a lot longer. So I'm cutting those into long strips, removing the flesh again. And this is a good tip, especially if you're making kachumbari for a lot of people or you want to pre-make it and have it sit out for a while, then by you removing the seeds, the flesh, by you removing the flesh in your tomatoes, it's going to actually sit out a lot longer and it's going to stay fresh a lot longer. So I'm just going to finish up this. So I don't know at home what different ways you guys make your kachumbari. I mentioned the traditional way in Kenya is we add, it's very simple, it's just onions and tomatoes with dania. And then from there you can add chilies if you want. The seasoning is usually just a bit of lemon juice and some salt. With mine I'm going to add some black pepper because I like black pepper. I'm going to add some lemon as well. And instead of dania, I'm using parsley. Now, depending where you're from, people tend to say that dania tastes like soap. I don't know why they say that. I don't think it does. <laughs> Maybe it's just like where you've grown up from. I mean, actually, I just remember I had cut some, so I'm just going to use whatever I had pre chopped earlier. Just a little bit. Trying to break this down, whatever is in large chunks. So don't want to waste it. So anyway, then we're going to slice our onion, just a little slice, not too much. So just a few slices of our onions, and then we're going to add this. And for me personally, again, it's a preferential thing, but I always feel like your kachumbari should have more tomatoes than onions, or try and balance it out. Because then if it's too many onions, it might be a bit on the bitter side. But by all means, if you like it with a lot of onions, then go ahead and just add a lot of onions. And then a tip, if you're using a lemon, always try and roll it out. This will ensure that you get the most juice you can. And for your vegetables, again, always make sure they're washed. My vegetables were already washed before I used them. So my lemon has been washed. And what this does is, mm, it smells so amazing. What this does, it's the, the lemon by itself, the aromas in it, they're more pungent, you can smell them, and then it gets the oil. If you look at it, it's all nice and shiny, that's from the oil. You get to see the oils that are inside the lemon itself. And that's all by rolling it out because it gets to moisturize itself, itself on the inside. Then you get it all nice and juicy. And that's exactly what you're looking for. See, I can actually... Oh, did you see that? <laughs> yes, so um, when you squeeze it like I'm doing, it's a lot easier to squeeze as compared to this one that I haven't rolled. This is firm and this is like very easy to squeeze while this one is quite firm. Okay, so that's a tip and you get more juice by rolling it out. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut it into half. And then I'm going to use my hand as my sieve. If you have a sieve, you can do it, but make sure your hands are clean. So I'm just going to sieve this. Try not to get the seeds inside your mixture. You don't want those because they're going to be bitter and no one wants to be biting on anything bitter in your salad. Okay, that's good enough. Then we're just going to mix that. Get your fork and then mix it. You could use your hands if you want to. Just make sure they're clean, like I've mentioned. Then we're going to add some salt. Just a little bit. Again, always put this in mind. If you use anything citric, it's got it's a bit um, on the tangy side, which means it's mainly has its own salt, so it's a bit tart. So you want to season 
you want to under season, you, want to, you don't want to over season. So make sure your salt is on the lower end because of the lemon inside there. Otherwise it's going to be very strong and we're trying to avoid that. Okay, so for me this is pretty good. And again you can have a taste, you can have a taste of your salad, your kachumbari. And that's it in a nutshell, that's all kachumbari is. So from this stage, if you wanted to add now like um, avocados like we do in Kenya sometimes, then you have yourself a guacamole. And for the guacamole, you could take it and then mash it to get yourself a proper guacamole that's mashed. But if you do want to, you could actually just add it as slices and have an avocado salad. So there's lots of things you can do from just one variation of a salad. Again, from this stage, you could also add some corn. So I'm just washing my hands there. From this stage, you could also add some corn. And then again, you have a corn salad. You could also add some mangoes. You have a mango salsa. So <laughs> lots of different things you can do at this stage. Again, I'm just going to taste. Mm. Personally, I love my onions. And what the lemon actually does to the onions, it pickles it a bit. So if you have the time, you could actually just squeeze your lemon juice on the um, onions. For a while and that's going to draw out the oniony taste and give it this nice light pickly taste from the lemon juice okay so once that's done i'm going to now place my food because everything else is ready again if you're just joining us we are making beef stroganoff with some turmeric rice and some kachumbari so i'm going to start with my rice and you see the amount of turmeric I put at the beginning was very little and you get this beautiful, beautiful golden color. If you can have a look here, it's just so nice and beautiful. This is actually from the garlic and the ginger that I put in there because I used fresh ginger and garlic. Okay, so I'm just going to scoop this into my bowl. And it smells heavenly, absolutely heavenly. Sometimes I wish you could actually smell the smell from the camera, but you know you can't. <laughs> So you kind of just have to watch with your eyes. Okay, so we have our rice plated. Then just cover the remaining. And then we're going to go ahead and plate our, our beef stroganoff. And our beef stroganoff is nice and creamy and thick. It's got some mushrooms in it. It's got some parsley in it, some cream in it, and of course the beef. So I'm plating this in a bowl. We could easily plate it in a plate, just so you can see the different colors, because I want them all together. And then we're going to plate our salad on the side. So then our plate is going to pop with color because you're going to have the red from the salad. And you see that it looks so pretty already. So sometimes you don't have to get all thought out of where you're going to plate your food. If you don't have a plate, you can just use whatever you have on hand. Like I mentioned, I'm using my bowl. Again, in Kenya, we're very used to eating our food, I guess, from plates and not always from a bowl. So it's just a good way for you to see what else you can do with your plating at home. There you go. And we're going to get some of our parsley and then just trickle this around because it was already chopped for you. Okay. And that's it for today. So again, this is a really simple, simple dish that you can make at home. I mentioned earlier, we've made some beef stroganoff. Sorry, let me just clean this up. Okay. So what we've made here is some beef stroganoff, which is that, which is basically just a mixture of some beef strips, some mushrooms in a cream sauce. I used some cooking cream, you could use sour cream, as well as some onions and some garlic. And then I have here my turmeric rice, as well as my kachumbari. So that's my easy meal for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in to Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. Please, please remember to follow us. We are online on Brand Plus TV. You can find us on Facebook. So I'll be looking to catch up with you guys there as well. So again, thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Shina Mario. Have a good evening. Bye.